Mallory, and I am a Jedi, like my fellow costumers before and after me. As you have probably guessed, in honor of the impending premiere of Star Wars The Force Awakens, I have broken out my full, many-layered Jedi garb that I made back in 1999. Oh, probably a core group of a good dozen people on the old discussion boards on theforce.net. We look at all the promo materials coming out. I remember scrutinizing these clings of Obi-Wan that were on the window at Taco Bell to figure things out. I have worn this for 12, 15 hours at a stretch. It's not much different from wearing a t-shirt and jeans. I loved the idea of all of these natural fabrics and all of the subtlety coming together. My first layer is, there are three pieces of course, there's the boots, the pants, are made from just a regular scrub pants pattern. I do not what, know what to call this type of silk. It is a very smooth weave, but it's got a good thickness to it and a really nice soft hand. And I've never found anything quite like it again. Definitely as much as possible go with all natural fabrics, with silk, with cotton, with linen, with wool. It, it just, you can tell, even if you're not someone who has a really close eye for fabric, everything that I'm about to put on or already have on is washable. I had this green actually left over from my Irish dress when I worked at the Renaissance Festival. It's all cotton, um, but it's got a little bit of a linen-y kind of texture to it. It was originally a light sky blue and I dyed it green and because of the uneven dyeing it has a nice worn look to it. I made it a cropped top partly for the thickness because when you're wearing so many layers you know suddenly you're going to feel like the Michelin man for running around a hotel with a lightsaber. There were times during the blaster battle that I ran around in just this undershirt and the pants and boots. A lot of the design of the Jedi and this goes back to the original trilogy is inspired by samurai. In any kimono, you wrap left over right. Almost without exception, I think I've seen one or two that applies to Jedi as well, even though it's in a completely different universe. The next layer is what we refer to as a tunic, generally speaking, among costumers, because that is the word that was used in the visual dictionary. What it's saying, tunic, is has, you know, three or four different layers, but it was a place to start, which makes sense because the Jedi are knights. Speaking of the Middle Ages, you have these scrunchy sleeve things going on, which is a feature of also my Anglo-Saxon underdress. Generally speaking, the next few layers on most of the Jedi you see in the prequel trilogy are all out of the same fabric. I made out of a cream-colored silk habotai, commonly referred to as raw silk. You hear silk, and unless you're experienced with it, you think, oh, that's fragile, it has to be dry clean. No. Everything in this outfit I have machine washed and machine dried multiple times. I have had this outfit for 16 years. Role playing indoors, role playing outdoors, wearing to movie marathons all day long, what have you. Sometimes you want to cool off, and so I can actually take the sleeves off of this and wear this as a sleeveless layer. I did take a tuck in the shoulder which makes it almost look like there's another layer on Obi-Wan's costume. And my, my personal headcanon for that is that Obi-Wan wears Qui-Gon's hand-me-downs. It would have to be adjusted a little bit. My next layer, uh, costumers variously refer to as a tabard, which again calls to mind knights. Um, or a vest. You may, might also see reference to it as a kamishimo which is a samurai garment that went over the kimono. Now this next piece referred to in costuming circles is either a sash or an obi. And this is kind of the shape that I came up with as a wrap shape that ties in the front. Adjust all of my layers here. My character that I played in Forces of the Empire, which by the way is still around, my character was named Kylie Renorin. That was a name I came up with when I was 11 years old. Kylie was knighted by Luke Skywalker in this outfit in about 2000 or 2001 at Media West. 
One of the people who was involved in the discussions that we had on the Force.net boards was named Amber and her site, Amber's Jedi Meditation Chamber, is in fact still online. It has all the, basically all the information we came up with in discussions that summer, including a diagram of how to make the cloak, the robe, that actually I drew out and wrote out based on all the information that we had discussed. That standard was picked up by a customer named Maggie, who still operates and updates the Padawan's Guide begin at those sites because they are a treasure trove. I have meant for many, many years to get high quality like replica, a good belt, a good lightsaber, grown-up toys. These are kids' toys. These are from the Hasbro Jedi gear set that came out in 1999. It also came, much to my amusement, with a Padawan braid that hooked over your ear. This just has Velcro in the back. It's adjustable up to pretty close to 30 inches, so obviously you have to be kind of small. So there's my belt, this lightsaber clip. It doesn't actually clip, it pretty much just stays on there by gravity, so I have to keep a close eye on it. Now, our final touch is, of course, the robe. I made my robe out of a nice heavy linen, um, because again, running around conventions indoors, it made more sense to me than wool. Uh, I had a costuming business and I made a number of these for customers or at the time and I did several of them out of a wool flannel uh, that worked pretty well. I pre-wash it because it will shrink up like crazy. Trisha Bigger, who is the costume designer for the prequel trilogy, talks about finding the right wool for the Jedi robes and particularly for Obi-Wan. She talks about finding a stash of this wool that she could tell from the hallmark and the salvage from what was manufactured sometime during World War II. And she talked about going through loads and loads of it because it would shrink up. They would make the robes and she, she would just watch them shrink up to like knee level before her eyes while they were shooting because they'd get wet and they'd be out in the sun and all this stuff. If you can see, there is no seam at the shoulder. There is no seam at the sleeve. The front and back of each side are all one piece and cutting this I was glad I had a long living room floor because <laughs> it got interesting so there you have it it's you know relatively easy to put on easy to wear I realized the other day when I decided to do this video I don't think I have worn this since I went to the midnight show of Revenge of the Sith 10 years ago which is crazy. <laughs> I think I'll probably be wearing it some more soon. May the force be with you and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye! Which means I have pockets. <laughs>